because there are more jobs available. We have created 9 million new jobs, including creating an entire new industry almost from scratch, the call center and BPO industry that has put the Philippines on the global map. I just came now from yet another call center and BPO center located in Eastwood. And um, there they have a thousand employees now. They're going to double that. And that is the story of almost every call center here. There are um, India's BPO business is at seven billion, no, no, it's at nine billion dollars. Ours is seven billion dollars. We're not very far behind. And if it comes to call centers themselves, we have more workers, half a million, in call centers than India does because India has more in the IT portion of it. So that is only one source, half a million people of the nine million new jobs created. Nine million new jobs is certainly a substantial result. One of our key legacies in terms of steering the Philippine economy forward in the new millennium is the sheer momentum of economic growth on our watch. 34 straight quarters of growth, and that is unprecedented. Capped by continued positive growth, as I said, even through the depths of the worst global recession in decades. And as Ben Hur said, we've also stabilized inflation, strengthened our currency, and we have increased the access of 3 million children to education through investments in schools, classrooms, and textbooks. And I must thank the cities, because even if education is not yet in devolved, you, the cities, use a lot of your own era and your income from licenses and real estate taxes in order to put up more classrooms, hire more teachers, and buy more textbooks. So we can say that together, we have invested in the people as a result of our tight fiscal controls, as a result of our new revenues, both national and city, and because of all this, the lower cost of borrowing and the bigger empowerment of the cities to borrow, as Ben Hur said. Now you can go straight to the financing institutions, get your own terms, and borrow on your own credit rating. That has led to more and better schools, more health care, and more economic opportunity. Another legacy is the fiscal reforms we instituted, capped by the expanded value-added tax, which brought down our deficit ratios. You see, when people talk about deficits, it shouldn't be the number itself. When people talk about our loans, it shouldn't be the loans themselves. It should be as a ratio of our own total production. And certainly, that ratio has gone down tremendously. Because a big corporation can borrow more than a small company because it can absorb the debt servicing more. And it is a way by which you can expand the economy more. And that is why, even if our critics point to absolute numbers, our ratings have been upgraded. Our cost of borrowing has been lowered. That means we have much better credit and economic rating than ever. And our revenues have funded economic stimulus and social safety nets against the worst of the global recession. Yes, these reforms were bitter and unpopular, but they have spared our country the worst of the global financial shocks. And equally important, they gave you and me the resources to stimulate the economy. Kuinento ni Ben-Hur kung paano lumaki ang ira, ang kalahatang ira over the past years. Pero ang pinakamalaking laki ng ira ay nangyari noong isang taon, 2009. The first year 
that the LGU shared in the new EVAT. That's why last year, the ERA increased by 40 billion pesos. It went up to 249 billion pesos from barely 210 the year before. And this year, it will be 265 billion, imparting strength throughout the country at every level of government. And I can understand your concern about how the cities will share in this new era. Of course, I can't comment on it in sub judice, but we respect whatever the League of Cities and individual cities will do as far as that is concerned. The immediate challenge coming up now is for you to make your respective cities a model of free, fair, and open elections. With the help of our newly established automated polling system, let's work hard to help the Comelec ensure this for the people of the Philippines and the people of your cities. Meanwhile, until June 30th, we are in our respective offices. So there should be no respite in our efforts to make our cities more and more livable. Let us look forward into the future to see what more we need to do in the next six months to ensure that the Philippines and your cities continue down a path of growth in the long term. With your unceasing hard work and with your support and with our supporting each other, I know that we will beat the odds and bring most of your cities to the first world in 20 years. Maraming salamat, and on this last meeting of yours, congratulations to the League of Cities.